to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. You are watching the SEC on ESPN in college football primetime presented by Hilton. And we're underway. Ole Miss at LSU. The Rebels won the toss and deferred. LSU elected to take the ball. And the opening kickoff from Luke Logan results in a fair catch by Colby Brunet. So here comes the number one team in the country, led by the Heisman Trophy front runner, senior quarterback Joe Burrow. Todd Blackledge, what a remarkable season he is having. <laughs> Can't imagine any quarterback playing any better than he's played. I mean, this guy was a 58% completion guy last year, almost 80 this year. Just has been remarkable. LSU 9-0, number one in the AP and coaches poll, and most importantly in the college football playoff rankings. And there's Clyde Edwards Elair ahead for eight on first down. Chick-fil-A impact players. Well, Clyde, the guy who just carried it, Clyde, Clyde Edwards Elair, had a huge game against Alabama. Jamar Chase, one of their three premier wide receivers. Burrow checks it down over the middle. Short gain, but enough for a first down to Terrace Marshall. Marshall has only played six games. This is his seventh game, was injured. And of all those receivers, he is the most impressive looking on the field. 6'4", 200 pounder, sophomore out of Bossier City, Louisiana. They spread the field now with five receivers. Burrow completing 79% of his passes for the year. Averaging 355 passing yards per game. The Rebels blitz him. They didn't get him. He's good on the move and his pass too high for the tight end Thaddeus Moss who's been an emerging force as a receiver in recent weeks. One of the things that Ole Miss uh, Mike McIntyre their defensive coordinator we talked to yesterday. One of the things they're going to try to do to Joe Burrow is they're going to try to line up in the same two deep shell with their safeties and not tip their hand until the ball snapped. That time they blitzed off the slot right as the ball was snapped and it forced Burrow to leave the pocket. They You'll don't see Burrow look to the sideline and the defense won't move at all until after they believe Burrow won't check with the sideline again. And that's what they did over the middle caught Justin Jefferson about a yard and a half short of the first down tackled by Willie Hibbler a linebacker. And they come quickly to the line on third down and short. Edwards Elair breaks through into Rebel territory and down with a first down at the Ole Miss 47. Another tackle for Willie Hibbler. And that's where LSU likes to use tempo. Third and short, second and short. They like to line up and go. And when you have a back as dependable as Edwards Elair, it's uh, it makes a lot of sense. Both Burrow and Edwards Elair immense in the win at Alabama last week. They shared Offensive Player of the Week award in the SEC. On target, Jamar Chase. He got planted, but it's a first down. Miles Hartfield made the tackle, but LSU, no sign of a hangover from that win in Tuscaloosa. Briskly on the move on the opening possession of the game. Joe Burrow just, he, he's so calm, so confident knows where he wants to go with the ball the majority of the time. 22 year old transfer from Ohio State eluded the rush. Lofts it deep for a touchdown. Jamar Chase. And you mentioned it Todd. He's so poised under pressure. Looked for sure like that was going to be a sack. And instead it turned into a 34 yard touchdown. Well there was a blitz off the edge. It doesn't rattle Joe Burrow. He steps up. Now, I thought he was going to run. He could have run for first down, but he also saw Jamar Chase pass John Hayes, and he said, why run for a first down when I can throw for a touchdown? And he's been doing that all season. His 34th touchdown pass of the season, adding to Burrow's single season LSU record. Cade York adds the extra point. And a terrific start for the number one team in the country, averaging almost 47 points per game. And anyway, we welcome you to Oxford. Sean McDonough, along with Todd Blackledge, joined shortly by Holly Rowe. Delighted to have you with us. Todd, not a huge surprise that LSU would be right. number one at this point in the season. They're number six in the preseason polls. But a big surprise, I think, to most college football fans that Joe Burrow at this time of the year 
is the front runner for the Heisman, but he certainly deserves it. Yeah, not only front runner for the Heisman, maybe the first quarterback picked in the NFL draft. He has just skyrocketed. His stock has gone so high, and he's just done everything. I mean, he has picked apart defenses with his accuracy. He's been poised. He's been calm. He's been an excellent runner. Last week against Alabama, he ran so effectively, I mean, it, in critical times. And so, and I think his toughness, Sean, his toughness as a runner, when he gets up after a tough hit, it fuels his entire football team. And uh, they believe in Joe, that's for sure. Avery Atkins will kick off. He's been terrific in this role. 65 touchbacks and 77 kickoffs. Tylen Knight is the deepest man for Ole Miss. Very little breeze in the stadium as this one begins on a 51 degree night down there on the field in this pleasant mid-November night is Holly Rowe. LSU coming off that big win against Alabama last week, but they have some serious changes on their offensive front, although I will say it didn't seem to impact them too much on that last drive. They do have their left tackle out. Sadiq Charles is out after a coach's decision. That means left guard Adrian McGee slides out to tackle and Ingram slides up. Austin Deculus is also out, so the Dora Traor will get the start there. A lot of changes up front. We'll see how that impacts them depth-wise as this game continues. They handled the opening possession very well. John Rice Plumley, freshman quarterback, throws on the move on target to their leading receiver, Elijah Moore. And he's across midfield and battles his way to the LSU 45. A gain of 30 right out of the gate for the Ole Miss Rebels. He's working on freshman Cordell Flott, number 25. Watch him just turn him around. Excellent job. And, you know, this is a team that runs about 75% of the time on first down. So they mixed him up on that one. They're the leading rushing team in the SEC are the Rebels. Jerry and Ely got popped by Jacob Phillips. But still got about six on first down. Here's John Rice Plumley, true freshman from Hattiesburg, about four hours south of here. Outstanding runner. 777 rushing yards this season. And right on cue, here he comes again inside the 30, out of bounds at the 25, 13 yards. On the run for Plumley, that's not only the most yards by any quarterback in a season here at Ole Miss, but it's the most rushing yards by any freshman of any position yeah. at Ole Miss. He has just infused so much energy and spark to this offense with his running ability, and the better he gets as a passer, the better this offense is going to be. They like to go quickly. It's Jerrion Ely, another fellow true freshman. And like Plumley, a two-sport athlete, they will both be on the baseball team. When the football season is over, Ely a top baseball prospect. They both went and took some swings in the batting yeah, cage on Monday. on Monday. Right. Unbelievable. Starting in an SEC game against the number one team in the country on Saturday. Off to an impressive start. Plumley a wobbler incomplete. That is the problem. They can't always complete passes even when receivers are open. The throwing of Plumley is still a work in progress. It is. You know, he's a kid who threw for a lot of yards in high school, but it's just different. You know, the game is different. It's much faster. And when you get those open guys like that, especially in the red zone, you got to capitalize. And that's one that John Rice Plumley wishes he had back. Third down and six. Most teams are passing down, not necessarily for Ole Miss. Plumley Chase looking for somebody has a man but looks to be out of bounds and it is Elijah Moore couldn't catch it. Well, Elijah Moore is clearly the favorite receiver of both Ole Miss quarterbacks 55 catches coming into the ballgame the next closest 16 by Ely out of the backfield and two times in a row they tried to get him the football and weren't able to connect. So they'll try a field goal with Luke Logan. It was just 11 out of 18 this season from the left hash mark. A 38-yard field goal try is off the right upright and no good. So a nice drive bogs down in the red zone. And it results in no points. They didn't quite reach the red zone, actually. No points off the doink, off the upright. 7-0 LSU. An eventful first four minutes.
You're watching college football primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. From Vaught Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi. Rivalry game, 108th meeting all time dating back to 1894. LSU leads 7 0. They march right down the field after taking the opening kickoff, 34 yard touchdown pass. Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase. Burrow four out of five for 60 yards on the opening drive. Throws that one in the flat to Justin Jefferson, who zips up the field and has a first down to the 35 yard line. Tackled by two safeties, Jalen Julius and John Haynes. So many weapons that Joe Burrow has to choose from. Three wide receivers, a talented tight end, a back who's excellent out of the backfield. Clyde Edwards Elia delivers a stiff arm from Kedron Smith, just shoved him away. And he has another first down into, well, they're going to mark it just short of the Rebel territory at about the LSU 47 yard line, and there's a Rebel down on the field. Official Quentin time Bivens. Out for an injured player. Red shirt freshman from Waynesboro, Mississippi. About three and a half hours from here, the same hometown as his fellow defensive lineman. Their standout up front, Benito Jones. As they tend to Bivens, let's check in back in the studio. Here's Matt Berry. Exciting finishes around college football today. Good to see Quentin Bivens up running off under his own power. You know, Sean, that last run by Clyde Edwards Delaire is, is typical of the way he runs. He's listed at 5'8. He might only be 5'7. Powerfully built, runs very low to the ground. He can make you miss with elusiveness, but he also has the power to run through tackles like he did on that last play. It was tremendous in the win last week. At Alabama ran for 103 and three touchdowns caught nine passes for 77 yards and another touchdown Burrow after the short set on target to Jamar Chase. He got to midfield before he's driven back by Lakia Henry their leading tackler and Miles Hartsfield. Ole Miss knows that whenever they take Edward Delaire or the tight end and put him out an empty set they want to work the middle of the field they want to try to slow down those slant routes and stop routes and crossing routes that LSU loves to throw when they spread you out with an empty formation. Edwards Elaire again. You mentioned his stature, his skill set. We both read an article this week, Drew Brees, the Saints quarterback, obviously, who follows LSU very closely, compared him to Mark Ingram. He said he looks exactly like Mark Ingram, and I think that is an apt comparison. Looked like Ole Miss was lined up offside there. No flag. It doesn't matter as Edwards Elair has a first down inside the 40 of Ole Miss, banged down by Keydron Smith. You know, I think this offense has just got better in their running game as the season has gone on. They started off throwing the football extremely well with Joe Burrow and these receivers, but the more this season has gone on, the running game has gotten that much more effective. Outside, defense number 13, that penalty is declined. The result of the play, first down. James Carter, the referee, there was a flag for that offside against Sam Williams. LSU on the move again. Already leading seven to nothing. And looking for the deep strike again, and it is incomplete. Intended for Jamar Chase. It was a perfect throw. <laughs> I mean, this was a perfect throw, and there was a little bit of pressure in the face of Burrow, but he was able to still put it over the outside shoulder. Good position, good coverage by Smith, but it was an excellent throw that Chase just wasn't able to come down with. A 
Swing it out to Edwards Elier. Makes a couple men miss and almost has a first down. Sam Williams whiffed for the Rebels. Jay Stanley made the stop at the 30. You can watch tonight's game at 4K on Comcast, Altice, or Direct TV. It's the Samsung QLED TV 4K game of the week. Third down and three for Burrow and the Tigers. Trouble at the junction. Sam Williams and Willie Hibbler combining to make the play. And it's fourth down. They'll send the field goal team out. Good anticipation. Watch them just crush the mesh point. Excellent job of destroying the mesh point by Sam Williams. And that's what messed up the timing of the play on third and short. Remember, LSU likes to go fast on third and short. That time, Sam Williams was the fastest on the field. There's Cade York, true freshman from McKinney, Texas, had an excellent year, taking over for the great Cole Tracy, their tremendous kicker from last season. It's a 48 yard try. It would match his longest, and it is no good, just wide right. So each team has missed a field goal in the first half of the first quarter. 7-0 LSU trying to win their 11th in a row dating back to their bowl win over UCF last year. And college football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. College football stays here. Book now at Hampton.com and in part by the Lincoln Wishlist sales event. Images from that emotional victory for LSU at Alabama last week. And Ogeron clearly choked up in the post-game interviews after having lost Aiden Road to Alabama. It felt good for Tiger fans everywhere. John Rice Plumley carried for four. We asked Ed yesterday, how many times a day do you say, go Tigers? And he said, <laughs> as many as I can. <laughs> He's getting to say it a lot right now. And people want to hear him say it in the state of Louisiana, which he loves. Louisiana native in his dream job. Of course, he was once on the other sideline here as the head coach. Plumley complete, retreating Elijah Moore. Wow. <laughs> That's a long way to run for a first down pickup. He gained about nine, but he ran about 99. Now we don't have time to replay that. We get to the half <laughs> if we show that entire play again. Officially an 11-yard gain for Elijah Moore. And Ole Miss, which had a good drive in its first possession, then missed a field goal. Has a first down to start this drive. Plumley tripped up. No gain, good penetration by Siaki Ika, backup nose guard. You know, we should mention, Holly talked about the changes on the offensive line for LSU in this ball game. Hasn't really showed up as a problem. Another guy who's not out there right now, Kerry Vincent Jr., their nickelback, number five, is a key part of their secondary. He's replaced right now by Cordell Flott, a very promising freshman, but a true freshman nonetheless. Plumley throwing a deep ball, and it is almost intercepted. Double coverage on Jonathan Mingo, and a diving attempt intercepted by Grant Delpit, the All-American safety. He's been banged up by an ankle and thigh problem. And when you throw that takeoff route to the short side of the field, that safety doesn't have very far to run to come over to help. And that's why Delpit was able to get there and get two hands on the football. John Rice needs to be careful <laughs> making that throw with so much air under it to the short side. And completing just 51% of his passes, but rushing for 111 yards per game. Quick pop on target, but more, or rather, Dennis Jackson this time, true freshman number five, is five yards short of the first down, fourth and five at midfield. You know, Plumley looks better throwing the football than the last time that we saw him against Auburn. I mean, they are playing at home. It's a couple weeks later. The coaches have told us that he's he's improving steadily in practice. And he does at least look more comfortable throwing it so far in the ballgame tonight. Three for six at the present time. 
Matt Luke, the Ole Miss head coach, sends Mac Brown out to punt. Derek Stingley, the freshman, back for it. Brown has it land at the two. Can they save it? Yes, they can. No, now the back judge is ruling it a touchback. Jordan Jernigan flipped it back, but to no avail. This guy from Ohio State that couldn't win a job ended up saying, you know what? I think I'm going to go to LSU. Joe Burrow was the best player on the field. Joe Burrow locked up the Heisman and locked up probably a top five draft pick in the NFL. Watching the SEC on ESPN from Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi. Final home game of the season for Ole Miss. They're four and six. Need to win this one and then win the Egg Bowl at Mississippi State on Thanksgiving night to ensure bowl eligibility at six and six. Tall task, obviously, for this young Ole Miss team. Third possession for LSU. They've run eight first down plays. They've gained 88 yards. They'll add to that total. Now the ball fumbled by Thaddeus Moss. And it looks like he got it back. Kedron Smith knocked it out. But the Rebels did not recover the Moss fumble. Clearly a fumble. He had started a football move down the field, reaches out with the left arm, and rips it back in. It was a beautiful throw and catch. And then a heads up play by Moss at the end. Lined up with 23 yards on the play. Joe Burrow completes more passes in the middle of the field between the numbers than anyone in college football. Ty Davis Price, the running back. That one is on target between the numbers to Terrace Marshall. And another double digit gainer on first down. That's good for 11. And they're at the Rebel 46. Very little pressure on Joe Burrow so far. And when you don't make him uncomfortable, again, he knows where he wants to go with the football, and he's uncannily accurate. Nearly 10 more on first down. Terrace Marshall, a nine-yard gain. Coach O was the head coach here at Ole Miss. Back in 2005-2007, Ty Davis Price straight ahead. It didn't go well for him. Matter of fact, if they win tonight, they'll have more wins this season. LSU with 10, as many wins, 10, as Coach O won in three seasons combined here in Oxford. He said he was grateful for the opportunity. He said, I was way too hard on everybody. Yeah. I learned you can't coach the whole team like you coach defensive linemen. He had been a... D line coach primarily before he got the head coaching opportunity. Here at Ole Miss. He did recruit well, and that's something that he's always been known for is his prowess as a recruiter. Here's a blitz picked up, swing pass. Ty Davis Price, the true freshman. Not much on that play. Lakia Henry made the tackle. And Matt Loop. Now the Ole Miss head coach was an assistant coach on the previous staff under David Cutcliffe when they got fired. Ed Ogeron kept him. And Matt Luke said one of the things I learned from Ed Ogeron, very important to emphasize recruiting more than the X's and O's. He said my focus had always been on the football part. It needed to be more on the recruiting part. And just the relentless aspect of recruiting that Ogeron brought to, to the staff. Three minutes to go in the quarter. Burrow on the move, on target. And Moss lunges for the first down, tackled by a true freshman, DeAndre Prince. Well, Thaddeus Moss is, uh, is a guy, obviously, most people know Randy Moss's son, but he missed all of last year with an injury. He missed all of 2017 when he sat out because he transferred from North Carolina State. And he is uh, really starting to come on with this LSU pass offense. He had six catches on six targets against Alabama last week. Davis Price remains the running back and gets back to the line, and that's about it. The biggest change in this Ole Miss defense from last year to this year has been their ability to defend the run. I mean, they have made a 
dramatic improvement in their run defense. The pass defense is where they've given up the big plays. I think if you're an Ole Miss fan, that's what's scary. Mike McIntyre there in the red was leaning back, the new defensive coordinator. LSU second in the country in pass offense, and Ole Miss 117th in pass defense. Here's Jamar Chase as a first down. They can't get him on the ground. Kedron Smith riding with him for a while, but could not tackle him, and it's first and goal at the four. Well, watch. There's an unblocked guy coming under pressure. That was Jacquez Jones, and Joe Burrow just coolly sidesteps him, keeps his eyes downfield, and hits the crossing chase. And it's a touchdown for Ty Davis Price. So three possessions for LSU, two touchdowns with a missed field goal in between. Absolutely no sign of a letdown after that enormous win at Alabama last week. Well, the play that Joe Burrow made on the to beat the blitz. Mike McIntyre finally realized I've got to do something to pressure this guy. He's too comfortable. He had a free rusher at him, and Joe Burrow just coolly sidestepped him and made a big play. And the extra point is up and good by Cade York. Fourth touchdown of his freshman season for Ty Davis Price. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Joe Burrow with 156 yards here in the first quarter has now set another mark, the single season passing yardage mark. He's on pace to break, break every single season passing record at LSU. He broke Rohan Davies' record here tonight for passing yards in a season. Avery Atkins, the touchback, and here's Matt Berry. First loss of the season for the Gophers. So they have a big matchup with Wisconsin down the road. And there's the mark we mentioned, Joe Burrow. Single season passing mark with a lot of season left. John Rice Plumley on first down, runs for six. I think it's a really important possession right here for John Rice Plumley and Ole Miss. They cannot afford to let this game get too much further out of touch. Down 14 to nothing. They had the missed field goal. They've had some plays. They need to find a way to get the ball in the end zone on this possession against this LSU defense. Playing tonight without their leading running back, Scotty Phillips, out for the second straight week with an ankle injury. Plumley down a yard short of the first down. Siaki Ika made the tackle. This LSU defense is, is different than it's been. It's not been a dominant group, but they are built to stop inside runs. Rashard Lawrence, that guy number 90, one of the leaders up there. They're big and thick with their three defensive linemen, and they're built to stop inside run, and that's well, that's what Ole Miss lives and dies by, the inside run, and then add the quarterback run with that. We spoke to Ed Orgeron last night and Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator. They both seem confident in their team's ability to stop the run, and they stop it there. Jacoby Stevens, the... Defensive back up around the line for Coach Aranda on the final play of the first quarter. That is the end of the quarter in which LSU had 204 yards of offense.
College football primetime is brought to you by Hampton by Hilton with more than 2,500 locations. You can follow your team anywhere. LSU fans following their team on the road for the final time in this regular season. They'll have two home games after tonight's game here at Ole Miss. Mac Brown to punt, but fourth and two as the second quarter begins with top ranked LSU leading 14 to nothing. Derek Stingley back for the punt. Ole Miss calls a timeout. Wow. I wonder if they had some sort of fake that First might or might not have been on. Yeah. That, it Miss. has to be that. Because it's that. Yeah, they were in timeout at the end of the quarter. You know, Matt Luke told us yesterday they're going to have to take some chances, be a little bit more aggressive. I think that's exactly what they had it called. They didn't get the look they wanted, and they had to get out of it. Well, you can kick off your week 11 NFL Sunday with ESPN and the app at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. All the breaking early stories as usual, previews of each game, right up until kickoff, and then the 50th season of Monday Night Football continues. On ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app, a lot of the members of our production and technical crew work on Monday Football. They're heading to Mexico City. Yeah, how about that? For the Chiefs and the Chargers. Mac Brown with the punt. Good punt. And a market at the 26-yard line. Great start for Joe Burrow again tonight. Yeah, and he's just doing what he's been doing. He sees everything. He doesn't miss a beat. He sees the corner pressure. He gets away from the inside rush, and his eyes are downfield. Could have run for first down, through for a touchdown. Here's an unblocked blitzer. Mike McIntyre says, we got to get this quarterback uncomfortable. It's easier said than done. You get a free rusher. He sidesteps him, finds Jamar Chase, and he picked up right where he's left off in Tuscaloosa last weekend. Came in completing 79% of his passes, and now he is 14 for 16 tonight. Jamar Chase out near midfield. Hedron Smith's been busy. He made the tackle after a 22-yard gain. There's Jimmy Burrow. Played at Nebraska, played in the Canadian Football League, then embarked on a, about a 40-year yeah. coaching career, most recently at Ohio U with Frank Solich. He retired as the defensive coordinator last year to come watch his yeah. son play. Actually started out playing here. He's from Mississippi. He played here and ended up transferring to Nebraska. I, I had a chance to visit with him today before the game over in the Grove. Burrow throws. Jamar Chase wide open. Touchdown. This isn't even fair, Sean. What, what's happening in this game so far? Joe Burrow just is unflappable. Again, he's going to leave the pocket. He's not going to panic. His eyes are downfield, and he sees Jamar Chase get behind the defense. Jay Stanley, a freshman safety, just was not in the right place. And if you're in the wrong place against Joe Burrow, he's going to find you. Two touchdown passes, Burrow to Chase. Here's Cade York to try to make it 21 to nothing. Burrow is 15 out of 17 for 229 and two touchdowns. Tonight, Southwest Airlines drive recap. Well, you're going to see Chase is right here. He's just going to go, and, and again, it's just kind of adjusting to the quarterback on the move. Jamar Chase was the outside receiver. He wasn't open initially, but he just keeps running. And when his quarterback left the pocket, he was able to find him on the sideline. And again, it's just it's just been too easy for Joe Burrow so far in the ballgame. Grew up in Athens, Ohio. As his dad was on the staff at Ohio for many years. And with that touchdown catch, his second of the night, that's 12 this season. Tying the single season touchdown reception mark held by Dwayne Bow in 2006. Jamar Chase already tonight, five catches for 138 yards and two touchdowns, and we're not even a minute into the second quarter. You know, I mentioned talking to Joe Burrow's dad, and, and you can just see and just feel and talking to him and his mom, it just they're living the dream. I mean, this this is a dream come true to be able to not only watch their son play, but to watch him and this team play at the level that they're playing. Tylen Knight returns the kickoff from Avery Atkins and a good kickoff return. 
Out to the 30 yard line. Here's Matt Berry. You know, those are the two best defenses in this league, Auburn and Georgia. And, uh, as we see Matt Corral in now, the other quarterback, the more gifted thrower of the two quarterbacks. He was the starter at the beginning of the year. He gives it to Jerry and Ely, who goes ahead for eight. Corral suffered injured ribs in their fourth game of the season against Cal yeah. had to come out of the game Plumley came in and was terrific nearly rallied them to victory and Corral had to sit out the next two games with the rib injury when he returned they were basically splitting time but Plumley was the starter and in recent weeks it's been much more Plumley than Corral. Well, they'll run the same plays, call the same plays. The biggest difference is they won't have as many designed quarterback runs with Matt Corral. Rich Rodriguez knows that, you know, that is, he saves those for John Rice Plumley, but Matt Corral can run the offense, and you don't have to change the plays other than those by design quarterback runs. Rich Rodriguez, first year as offensive coordinator here after six years as head coach at Arizona. As he's enjoyed it very much. There's the throwing ability of Corral on target to Elijah Moore. They've moved the ball in spurts here in the first half, and that one was tackled by Cordell Flott after a 13 yard gain. Very similar play to we see LSU run. It's an RPO, the lines blocking run, and they run the slant behind it. Ely. Tackled by Jacoby Stevens, but that's about 10 more and the Rebels are on the move again I think this is good going with Corral the better passer and also trying to get the ball on the perimeter not try to run Inside where you're outmanned. I mean, this is a pretty good offensive line with Ole Miss But they're smaller in comparison to this defensive front of LSU Get your speed out on the perimeter The previous play is on a further review for the spot on the field. Media reminds us we're here at Vaught Hemingway Stadium in Oxford. Big game, number one LSU and Ole Miss. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections, passionate fans, by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. The Ole Miss Rebel Student Section already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. You heard James Carter, the referee. They moved the ball back a little bit. It's not a first down. It's second and about a foot. And that's about all Snoop Connor got. But enough for the first down this time. Just inside the 35-yard line. You know, you mentioned earlier that Scotty Phillips, their veteran running back, not playing in the ball game, has been banged up for the last couple weeks. They really miss him on those short yardage plays. They got the first down there, but he's a little bigger, a little more mature physically runs with a little more pop behind his pads than the two freshman tailbacks they have. They have both of the freshman running backs in the game together now Ely and Connor. It's a reverse for Elijah Moore. He's in trouble. And did well to get back within about three yards of the line of scrimmage Patrick Queen among the Tiger defenders and he's a little slow getting up number eight. Excellent play by Caleb on Chason. Chason also, I mean, he really stayed at home, played discipline, and forced that play inside. Matt Corral from Southern California, Long Beach Poly, is throw too high for Jonathan Mingo with the true freshman Derek Stingley in coverage. 
Stingley is out there on an island most every game. I mean, they play a lot of press man-to-man -man with their corners, both Christian Fulton and Derek Stingley. Dave Moran, the defensive coordinator, that's his style. He does a lot of stuff inside, but he takes those outside guys and says, guys, have fun playing on the island. And uh, sometimes you get beat that way, but Stingley's been excellent. Harrell threw on the move and a low throw to Elijah Moore. It'll be fourth down and 12. They haven't kicked field goals well, and this would be more than a 50 yarder. And see, that's where you just have to make a completion there because you, you're, you're thinking you got to go for it on fourth down. You're down 21 to nothing, but fourth and 12 is hard against a good defense. Fourth and five, fourth and six, you got a pretty good chance. You have to make those easy completions when you have a chance. Corral's deep enough back that you wonder if he might quick kick it. And he didn't get the playoff. Play clock ran out on him. Do they have game? Offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Now you have to punt it. And the offense is coming off. The young team for Ole Miss, 86% of their total offense has come from freshmen. Now it's a young team, and unfortunately, it's it's too one-dimensional right now, also. And when you play the better teams and the better defenses, that's a problem. Mac Brown trying to pin the Tigers deep. And a bad bounce. It hit and skipped too quickly for Tylen Knight to be able to down it. Here's Holly. Guys, a lot of people wanted to know how this LSU team would react after that big win. Everybody was sky high with the win over Alabama. But Ed Ergeron did something Monday. It's called Tell the Truth Monday. He wanted them to see that they played a good 30 minutes of football, but they had plenty to clean up after that win, giving up 41 points. The team I see here on the sideline is very businesslike. Joe Burrow, after that last big touchdown, just came over, gave a head nod to Ed Orgeron. Not a lot of celebration. Very workmanlike attitude over here. Yeah, you can see it. I mean, <laughs> they, uh, they are not missing a beat. They're missing a few players, but they're not missing a beat. The guys that are playing. Sixth catch already for Jamar Chase. Short gain. You know, I talked to Joe Brady on the field before the game. The young, up-and-coming coach came from the New Orleans Saints, spent a couple years with Penn State, and uh, he loves just the way Joe Brady is approaching the game. There's Justin Jefferson on the last catch. Here is Clyde edwards Elair, and he's down about two yards short. You were saying that Coach Brady said that Joe Burrow really does just about everything that Drew Brees does. Yeah, well, and Joe Brady graduated when he was at Ohio State. So when he came to LSU, he came to major in football. He's still, he's taking grad classes, but his primary focus is football. He devotes an incredible amount of time, like an NFL quarterback, in his preparation. And uh, that's why he is so locked in on the field. Burrow graduated from Ohio State in three years with a degree in consumer and family financial. Services his throw on target Racy McMath with Kedron Smith in coverage 11th catch of the season for McMath a junior from New Orleans There is a flag down but excellent separation by McMath and again Joe Burrow sees the whole field and he's going to find the matchup he likes there's just no slowing him down right now. 17 of 19 now. Almost 300 yards in the in the first half. The ruling on the field is a completed catch. Sideline interference against the defense. The official ran into a member of the coaching staff. 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. Well, it's hard enough to stop this LSU yeah. team. You don't need to give them 15 more that way. They move the ball to the 26 yard line. Burrow spent a red shirt year at Ohio State and then two years backing up JT Barrett. He fakes the handoff. Wow. 
that's the part of his game that, that doesn't get as much notice. He doesn't run it a lot. But when he does make the decision to run, it's usually very effective. Well, he's a terrific athlete. He yeah. was an all-state point guard in basketball in addition to being Mr. Football in the state of Ohio in high school. 6'2", 216 yards, uh, 216 pounds, obviously excellent size. And he's athletic. He is tough. He is competitive as can be. Terrific leadership ability. He isn't lacking for anything, it would seem. Clyde Edwards E. Lair got him down to the 12 yard line to the point now where, when the season began, you are Todd McShay and most other draft experts had him perhaps as a third day right. pick, fourth right. round or higher. Now it's possible he could be the number one pick in the draft in the NFL next year. Justin Jefferson will win that race. Touchdown LSU. Well, Ole Miss was a little confused. They were a little bit late getting lined up and they had nobody over Jefferson. And Joe Burrow saw it right away. You're going to see Joe Burrow's going to get it right away. Just get that ball out to Jefferson. There was no coverage over the top of him. And that's just a quarterback and a wide receiver being in sync. It was a wobbly pass because Joe Burrow didn't have the laces. He just got that ball and flipped it out as quick as he could to Jefferson for the touchdown. Cade York makes it 28 to nothing. Too easy, Sean. It's just too easy for the guy right now tonight. Burrow is 18 out of 20. Three touchdown passes now in 279 yards. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Goodyear, celebrating those who rise above. Goodyear, more driven. And Mazda, feel alive. Ed Orgeron through the years, was once the head coach here, now in his dream job, Rose, Louisiana. Third full season as the head coach. Took over when Les Miles was let go four games into the 2016 season. Avery Atkins, Tyler Knight, will down his kick. The Disney Bundle is now available. You get ESPN Plus with great content like NFL Primetime, UFC, NHL, and the 30 for 30 library. And you get Disney Plus and Hulu. It's an amazing package of movies, sports, and shows. Go to ESPNplus.com to sign up now. Incredible season for Joe Burrow continues. 18 out of 20 for 279 and three touchdowns. Ole Miss takes over. John Rice Plumley back in at quarterback. He handed it off. Great speed by Ely. He's a big playmaker and he's making a big play. All the way down to the 25 yard line of LSU. Well, this is the counter play. They're going to pull the backside guard and tackle and just slip in behind there with Ely. Kick out and a lead through, and then the speed does the rest. First blocker kicks out the edge defender. The next blocker leads up through on the linebacker, and Ely shows his speed when he got in the hole. 49-yard run. He's had three rushes of 50-plus this season. That's fifth most in the country. Here he comes again inside the 20. When we spoke with Coach Ogeron yesterday, he said things have gone well, but we need to play better defense yeah. and we need to be better on special teams to yeah. really get to where we want to be. Yeah, and play 60 minutes. You know, and Holly mentioned that earlier that they felt like 30 minutes they were fantastic last week against Alabama. They were outplayed in the second half in a lot of ways, outgained, outscored. He gave up 28 points in the second half. Gave up a long punt return. John Rice Plumley scurries out of bounds. They're giving up 22 points per game. The LSU defense, that's 36th in the country. 
They're 33rd in the country in total defense. Certainly the defense lagging behind what the offense has done. Well, this has just been, I mean, just such a different LSU offense. They, they've never had offense like this. They've had great defense, haven't had this kind of offense. Plumley showing that rushing ability that has led to a historic season. It looks like he has a first down near the three yard line. Same play, the counter. Nice job that time also by the center. Getting a nice block on that big nose guard, opening up that counter play hit inside that time. Plumley with a good read. Beely dropped for a loss. Back outside the five. Micah Baskerville, sophomore from Shreveport, made the play. You're this close to the goal line, you can put everybody around the line of scrimmage and still play pass coverage. You don't have to worry about depth. At that time, LSU had everybody right around the line of scrimmage, and Baskerville was completely unblocked running through the middle of the defense. Not great in goal-to-go -go situations, part because they lean so heavily on the run, Todd. You get everybody up near the line of scrimmage because the field is compressed. See all those LSU defenders within about six yards of the ball. Plumley keeps it. That's a touchdown in a goal-to-go -to -go situation. And the Rebels are on the board with 540 to go in the half. Nice little misdirection that time. They had two backs in the backfield, and they're going to cross. The backs are going to cross, and watch the block that Connor gets right here as Plumley pulls the football. Fakes it to Ely, follows Connor, and gets the ball in the end zone for the Ole Miss touchdown. Good design, good execution on that goal line run. The eighth rushing touchdown of the season for John Rice Plumley, the freshman from Hattiesburg. Luke Logan makes the extra point. It's been a decent half on offense for Ole Miss. They have 190 total yards. And now they have a touchdown. It's 28 to 7. Prime time's available Sunday through Wednesday only on ESPN Plus. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. LSU leading the SEC West, eyeing a date with Georgia in the conference championship game in Atlanta. The Bulldogs clinched the East with their win at Auburn just earlier. Short kickoff. It is bobbled by Torrey Carter. He was able to corral Luke Logan's kick. Back in the studio once again, here's Matt. And you noted they're playing without C.D. Lamb yeah. tonight. That's a big them. loss. Yeah. Outstanding wide receiver for the Sooners. Joe Burrow 18 out of 20 for 279 and three touchdowns with 540 to go in the first half. LSU leading 28 to 7. Been well protected all night. Floats one there and it's still complete to Terrace Marshall. Well, another record set tonight. Three touchdown passes combined for Chase and Jefferson. Chase two uh, touchdown catches and Jefferson one. That gives them 22 combined for the season. Previous record was set back in 2003-21 combined Devery Henderson and Michael Clayton. And then with that last completion before this run by Edwards Elaire, that's 13 straight completions for Joe Burrow. And that ties his career high set last week. Right. 13 last week in a row against Alabama. Last week was the first 13 passes of the game. He hit. Look out. <laughs> Finally couldn't find somewhere to throw it. Done such a great job of rolling around until someone broke open. But that time Tyreekus Tisdale said you're going down back at the 40. 
And for a brief moment, he thought about throwing that back across the field to Clyde Edwards Hilaire and then decided, no, that's not a good decision. Sometimes the defense wins and go ahead and uh, take the loss. He was sacked five times last week at Alabama, but he didn't put the ball in harm's way. Well, it's hard to improve on your completion percentage for the year when you come in at 78.9%, yeah. which is on pace to shatter the single season FBS record. But he's done it. He's 19 for 21 tonight. Timeout, 358 to go in the half. Number one LSU on top by 21. ESPN, home of the New Year's Six and the college football playoff. Yeah, that was tough to watch Todd this afternoon when they parted Tua off the field with a hip injury Matt Barry and his cohorts will have more details at the half. Here it's 28 7 LSU under four minutes to go. Till the half. Second and 13 for Joe Burrow and the Tigers from their own 40. Another completion 14 in a row Jamar Chase has another first down across midfield. You know Sean it, it, it makes you wonder after what happened just down the road in Starkville Mississippi the two of you know how long does Joe Burrow stay in a game like this you know and how many times do you want him running the football because he doesn't slide and he doesn't run out of bounds he runs with great toughness but certainly. He is the key to your future and to the rest of this season. Edwards Hilaire down at the 43 yard line, a gain of three. Well, Alabama scored today on its first five possessions, five touchdowns. It had a big early lead. Uh, Tua was injured. They don't think, at least Nick Saban said he didn't think the ankle injury yeah. had anything to do with today's injury, but. They've certainly asked a lot of him the last couple of yeah. years, you know, putting his ankle back together and running him back out there. And let's hope that his very bright future in professional football is not damaged by what happened today. It seemed to be a very serious injury. 15 straight completions. Moss driven back. Didn't look like he got to the line to make. Here's the problem for Mike McIntyre right now, the defensive coordinator at Ole Miss. I mean, he's stuck. If I blitz this guy, he sees the whole field, and we don't match up well with their wide receivers. If we sit back and play zone and just try to play coverage, he, he, he's going to pick us apart. He's not forcing any balls. I mean, he does not throw the ball into trouble. If he plays zone, he'll throw underneath, he'll hit his back, so he'll hit underneath routes. If you try to bring pressure and play man-to-man, -man, he's going to beat you down the field with these elite wide receivers. Mike McIntyre, for six years the head coach at Colorado, National Coach of the Year there in 2016 when the Buffs won 10 games for the first time in 15 years. Play fake to Edwards Elair, a deep throw to another open receiver, Justin Jefferson, first and goal LSU inside the 10. Well, just a, an interesting formation that time. Holding offense, number 81, 10 yard penalty, first down. They like to work out of this bunch set with a tight end and two receivers. So here's Moss. He's going to be the guy that gets the holding. Jefferson's going to come all the way underneath and then down the sideline out of this formation. A little delay route, and it's a throwback by design. Had him matched up mm. on a linebacker, and all for naught. Willie Hibbler was the guy in coverage, but because of the holding to Thaddeus Moss, that beautifully designed play doesn't count. We've certainly seen more egregious holding penalties in our time. 
Back it comes to the 45 yard line. Burrow such great feel in so many aspects runs out of bounds and then gets belted on a late hit by Lakia Henry who will be flagged for that one. Yeah, Joe Burrow gave himself up I mean, he, he clearly ran to the sideline ran out of bounds. Mom and dad a little nervous about the end of of that play. And the officials right there to make the, the appropriate call clearly a late hit out of bounds. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense number one, 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. That's the, the second 15 yard penalty now on Ole Miss that has extended an LSU drive, and that one's not even close to being a clean play. And it goes back to your point. I mean, it's still in the first half. Yeah. But. If you're an LSU fan, you hold your breath when you see something like that. Well, the game in Starkville was 35 to 7 when Tua got hurt. It was a 28 point lead late in the first half. This one is getting that way itself. Blitz off the corner. He got it off to Edwards Elair. He's inside the 10, has a first down. Inside the six yard line first and goal for LSU the thing that makes this kid so good is he does everything He can run with power. He can catch the ball of the backfield. He can make you miss He picks up blitzes. That's why he is going to be in every down back in the NFL well, They list him at 5'8". He's probably closer to 5'7". Ed Ogeron says Edwards Elair is 6'4, 270. That's yeah. the way he plays and with a big heart as well. His family represented here tonight. He's in trouble and drop for a loss. Willie Hibbler made the tackle. It'll be third down and goal as we approach a half minute left till halftime. Well, that was Willie Hibbler coming inside the block of the left tackle. We mentor Adrian McGee, who's normally the left guard, starting at left tackle. He was not able to get the cutoff block on that play. And that may be the first play of the entire first half where the changes in the offensive line showed up for LSU. Second charge time out of the half. LSU, 30 seconds. Game clock operator, please put the game clock to 16 seconds. 16 seconds on the game clock. So Joe Burrow, Thank 22 you. of 24, Todd. Right now <laughs> he's right around 80% completion percentage for the season. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And again, he finished the year really strong last year. Threw for a lot of yards. Threw for 292 against Ole Miss last year. That was the most that he threw against an SEC team. He's now thrown for over 300 yards in eight ball games as well. And he's completing right around 80%. And it's just, it's mind blowing, you know, just how his numbers have taken off. And, you know, Steve Edsminger is the offensive coordinator, the play caller. But I'll tell you what, Joe Brady and what he has brought to Joe Burrow and to this LSU pass offense cannot be underestimated in any way. Another school record for consecutive completions now belongs to Burrow with 16 in a row here tonight. Empty formation. This is quarterback run area two for Joe Burrow. Given what we've seen today and tonight, I don't know if I'd like that if I was an LSU fan. He's in trouble. He'll be sacked. Back outside the 15-yard line. Sam Williams, the first man there. And Josiah Coatney also involved. Well, they came after him. They, they're bringing pressure. And what happened, the two receivers, Jamar Chase and the running back, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, ran into each other. And that's why Joe Burrow couldn't get rid of the football, had to hold on to it and double clutch it. And the pass rush from the outside by Sam Williams got to him, but the two receivers that were kind of running a rub route off each other actually ran into each other, and that's why Burrow couldn't get rid of the football.
Here's Cade York. Missed from 48, just missed it wide right. This would be a 33 yard try. And the kick is good. Here's why Joe Burrow couldn't get rid of the football. This is a play. These two receivers, are one's going to go in, one's going to go out. They want to get as close as they can to each other, but they don't want to run in. And that, Hilaire actually got knocked down. It was Ty Rocconi who was able to get pressure and knock down the intended receiver on the inside, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And Joe Burrow had to hold the football. Now what's Joe, he down to? Joe Burrow's... <laughs> Completion percentage for the season right now is 79.87%. So we've rounded up to 79.9. He could be at 80% by the end of the night very easily, obviously. And the single season record is 76-7 for Colt McCoy of Texas back in 2008. But look at him. He is upset. He is mad about that last play. And I'm telling you, that that is what this team has gravitated around him and how they've rallied behind him is that kind of leadership. Transferred in in May of last year. He went through spring practice at Ohio State when he realized he was going to lose out in the battle for the job with Dwayne Haskins, now with the Redskins. After sitting for three years, he decided, well, I'm not sitting around here. He transferred to LSU and won the job there. Was the captain before the season even started. Fair catch made by Casey Kelly. I think of all the numbers we've talked about tonight, the one that might jump out to me the most about Burrow, he has thrown three straight incompletions only once this entire season. That was the game against Texas, the second game of the season in Austin. Three straight incompletions, one time all year. Offside, kicking team. Five yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. I'm just so impressed with after the win last week, which was such an emotional win. They had lost eight in a row to Alabama. I mean, they did things against Alabama that, that LSU's never done in terms of yardage and points and those kind of things. They came back to Baton Rouge, and it looked like they won the national championship. The crowd that was waiting for them there. Dennis Jackson to catch off the RPO. Patrick Queen the tackle. And it's halftime. Seems like Joe Burrow makes history with every pass. He and the number one Tigers lead 31 to 7 at the half. Now back to the studio. Here's the Mercedes Benz halftime report. a touchdown for Ty Davis Price. Burrow throws Jamar Chase wide open. Touchdown. Justin Jefferson will win that race. Plumley keeps it. That's a touchdown. And the Rebels are on the board. You're watching College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. From Bot Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi, on the campus of the University of Mississippi, number one LSU leading Ole Miss 31 to 7. We welcome you back, Sean McDonough, along with Todd Blackledge. LSU will kick off to begin the second half. Avery Atkins to kick it away. We'll be joined shortly by Holly Rowe. And the second half is underway with a touchback. Todd wasn't very long ago. It looked like the Heisman race was wide open. Yeah. Now it looks like it might have ended tonight <laughs> with what Joe Burrow's doing. It's just amazing what he and this offense, and again, I've watched so many LSU games over the years, have never seen their offense look like this. And Joe Burrow has just been magical. I mean, they got 400 yards of offense in the first half. He only missed two passes in the first half, already over 300 yards, and he just makes it look easy. 319 for the half. 
Ole Miss ball to begin the second half and a big gainer to Octavius Cooley the tight end across midfield and down at the LSU 46 yard line that's 29 yards Ole Miss did have 209 yards of offense in the first half they moved the ball yeah remember they opened the game with a pass play a pass completion for good yardage. John Rice Plumley continues at quarterback. He takes off running. He's going to take off to the end zone. Two plays and a touchdown for Ole Miss in just 31 seconds. So the defense remains a concern for the number one team in the country. That is a 46 yard touchdown run. Wow. <laughs> Talk about explosive now. Two plays. The Plumley family has made the trip up from Hattiesburg. Dad, Den, Mom, Lori, and the sisters, Ryan and Reese. Ryan goes to Alabama, and she told John Rice that at the Alabama game where he made uh, his first start of his career, she was cheering for both teams. <laughs> yeah, sitting in the Alabama cheering section, but had a pin with his picture on it. They get the throw to Elijah Moore for the two point conversion to make this a two score football game. Just like that. Unbelievable. Rocking the old school helmets. Throwback to the days back in the uh, 50s and 60s when this was really a spirited rivalry. Two plays for the touchdown. John Rice Plumley, nobody in the picture. Well, Christian Fulton was the middle safety. He's normally a corner. The formation had him in the middle of the field, and he just got completely fooled watching the action of the backs, and nobody had contain on that outside. And of course, the speed of Plumley, if you make a mistake like that, he's going to make you pay for it. Well, he's rushed for 94 yards, uh, excuse me, thrown for 94, rushed for 92, and he's rushed for both touchdowns. Matt Luke's team continues to fight. It's been a frustrating season. They've lost four of their six games by seven points or less. Really only blown out once. That was by Alabama by 28 points in Tuscaloosa. And even that game, it was 10-7 for a good amount of the first half. And then Alabama exploded on them in the second quarter. Another high short kick by Logan and a fair catch by Torrey Carter. On the way to the locker room prior to the half, Holly spoke with Ed Orgeron. Well, Coach, you, a lot of people wanted to know, would there be a hangover after your big win with Alabama? How do you assess how your guys came out and took care of business so far? Oh, I'm proud of our guys. It was business-like. I thought we played very well in the first half. We got to stop the little counter play that they run in the second half. But overall, I'm pleased with our football team. Your quarterback, Joe Burrow, takes the late hit out of bounds. Given what happened with Tua today, like if yeah. you have a big lead, how long do you leave him in there? Not too long. I guarantee, I guarantee you that. If we can get up 38-7, I think I'm, I'm putting in miles. I'm looking forward to miles playing. All right. Thank you, Coach. Go Tigers. A little change in that plan, at least for the moment. Burrow runs over the umpire, and that gets tackled after a 15-yard gain. Fortunately, it looks like Russ Pulley is all right as he gets back up with a smile on his face. Well, it's his own read. They tackled the back. The, the read tells Joe Burrow to keep it. You don't want to run it a bunch. The umpire gets in the way, gets a fistful of, uh, of Joe Burrow. So after just hearing the coach say they'd like to get him right. out of there if they can, the first play is a quarterback run. Now it's a dump off to Clyde Edwards Elair, and he's out to the. 42 yard line. Yeah, 38 to 7. Maybe we'll get him out. 31 to 15. He's going to run the ball. <laughs> it's a game now, especially yeah. with the problems the LSU defense has had. And Ole Miss has demonstrated the ability to go up and down the field here tonight. Two touchdowns already in a missed field goal. This is not a good plan against Clyde Edwards Hilaire trying to rip the football off. Number one, you're not going to get it. And number two, you give up extra yards by not getting him on the ground. Alabama tried to do that to him last week, and he just continued to fight forward for more yardage. It's too early in the game to try to rip the football off. Make solid tackles, get him on the ground. 
Big night for Matt Luke in these Rebels senior night last home game for 20 seniors. That's always emotional. Edwards Elair again down to the 40. They have 120 recruits here yeah. tonight. They think they're recruiting very well. They believe they've dug out of the mess of the NCAA sanctions, the ugly end of Hugh Freeze's tenure here as the head coach. Bounce back from scholarship reductions. They could use one big win. Really bring back the positive vibe around this football program. Some close calls, but haven't been able to do it. And that pass incomplete just the third of the night thrown by Burrow in 26 throws intended for Terrace Marshall and Jalen Julius broke it up. Here comes a big third yeah. down and seven. They got the incompletion. They also got a pretty good hit on Joe Burrow knocked him to the ground on that second down play and a little more energy in the stadium here on this third down play. So 17 straight completions before that incompletion that is the. LSU record. When they put Edwards Elaire outside, they like to work inside to their key receivers. Edwards Elaire was widest to the left. They work inside to Jefferson, and he has the first down. Just with a yard or a yard and a half to spare, Miles Hartsfield too late to get there for Ole Miss. And Jalen Julius took a bad angle. He actually was there to make a play, but he undercut the play, took a bad angle, and that enabled Jefferson to get upfield and make the first down. His sixth catch of the night. Jamar Chase has six. Terrace Marshall has four. Burrow threw for 319 in the first half. That was not his biggest first half of the season. Threw for more yards against Vandy in the opening half. That one off the fingers of Justin Jefferson. Boy, it feels like a drought now without a yeah, completion. Right. Yeah, that's two out of three that were incomplete. Twenty third start in two seasons for Burrow. He started every game since he arrived from Ohio State. He's 19 and three as the starting quarterback. Ten and three last year. Fiesta Bowl win over UCF. Trying to get to 10 and 0 this year. Edwards Elair about a yard short of the first down. When they run their zone play, they do a good job with their tight end, Thaddeus Moss. They kind of bring him in and insert him in the middle of that defense. He does a good job of hunting up linebackers. Burrow burrows his way for a first down near the 20. With the 300 yard game tonight, he's thrown for 300 or more now in 10 of the last 13 games. They've had single coverage on Jamar Chase the last couple plays. He's up here to the top. Let's see if they see if they can find it a way to get him the football. Tenth play of the drive. Edward Zelayer wrapped up by Willie Hibbler's at a good night for this Ole Miss defense. Senior from Sardis, Mississippi, out of North Panola High School. He was a tight end in high school. Should mention too, before the even half even started, Benito Jones, their best player, was walking to the locker room with a towel on his head. He's probably done for the night, so they're playing right now without their best player on this Ole Miss defense. Yeah, it's a tough end to his home career for Benito Jones, a senior. Mike McIntyre says he'll definitely play in the NFL. Mike would know. Edwards Elair ahead to the 15 yard line. Mike McIntyre spent five years coaching in the NFL with Bill Parcells with the New York Jets and the Dallas Cowboys. Pursued from behind, checks it down to Justin Jefferson. It looked like he went out of bounds short of that yellow line. Well, they give him a spot very close to it. It looks like he's about a foot short. And what's Coach O going to do here? 
Different formation that time. They had Jefferson in the backfield, motion out of the backfield. He was not the intended receiver. He was an outlet. And Joe Burrow got it to him. That the runner was short of the line again. Third down. Fourth down. Correction, fourth down. And the play clock running down, and that shouldn't happen at LSU with all that confusion. First charge down out of the half. No. LSU. Now, to me, that's poor officiating. I mean, in the confusion about what down it is, which the referee contributed to while he's making the announcement, the clock's running down. Well, let's go back and take a look at what happened. Necessitating a timeout call by LSU. You see the referee, he's making his announcement there that it's fourth down. There's some confusion. Meanwhile, while he's chatting, the play clock's still running. And LSU had to use a timeout. We'll bring in Bill Lamagne in just a moment, but they're ready to go out of the timeout now. And LSU's going to go for it on this fourth down and one. Leading by two scores, a field goal would make it three. 9.42 to go, third quarter. And again, no Benito Jones in the middle of that old Miss defense on this fourth and short. It's a pass, and Edwards Elaire does get the first down. So let's go back to Bill Lamagna, our rules expert. Bill, uh, what happened there with the clock? When there's that type of confusion, they look to see if it was a first down. They weren't, did not have the ball ready. They needed to give a new 25 second clock pump up on that. And then I would have on a PR situation when that coach asked for that timeout on the confusion, I would have just PR'd it and said, Coach, you don't need the timeout. We're going to give you a new 25 unless you want it. Justin Jefferson, PR meaning? Public relations. <laughs> <laughs> so, PR so move. It's about management, game management. Mm -hmm. Well, they're hoping that the burning of a timeout there isn't an issue. That ball was catchable. For Justin Jefferson. Another good hit on Joe Burrow right as he released that football. So a couple hits here early in the second half by the Rebel defense. More incompletions here in the opening moments of the third quarter than he threw in the entire first half. Edwards Elio. Stacked up at the nine yard line. Holly? You guys, uh, Ole Miss defense making a nice defensive stand right here despite being without their best defensive lineman, Benito Jones. He went to the locker room. He has had a head injury. He will not return to this game. He came out after halftime, tried to go through a warm up period, but it was not to be. Well, that's a big loss. I mean, he's a really good player and a disruptor on the inside. Josiah Cotney has played inside. He's typically an end in their three man front, but he can play inside. Third down and goal. They're just inside the nine yard line. Mike McIntyre brought a blitz. Looked like one of the blitzers had his face mask grabbed. There is a flag down, and the pass incomplete for Thaddeus Moss. I think they're going to get a hands to the face on the right guard, mm -hmm. Damian Lewis. They grab Jack West Jones. Holding. Offense number 74. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. That's With the Dara new. Treyor, who is the right tackle, stepped in as the starter tonight for Austin Deculus. Yeah, I think 68 had a hand to the face. There's the hold on Treyor 74. Just kind of spun his man around as he was going after the quarterback. And, and that's a win for Ole Miss. That's a win for their defense. Good field goal here. Again, a three-pointer would make it a three-score game. 27-yard attempt for Cade York. One for two tonight. He's two for three tonight. 8-19 to go in the third quarter. Brought to you by General Mills. Bring more to your game day with General Mills tailgate recipes. See what you can create at wearetailgatenation.com. Top teams in the country winners today, but a huge loss for Alabama in their victory at Mississippi State. Tua Tungo by Loa suffered right hip dislocation. 
he is going to miss the rest of the season. The good news is Dr. Lyle Kane, their orthopedic surgeon at Alabama, said he does anticipate that two will make a full recovery. Two very tough injuries in the same season for that young man. Mm -hmm. Similar ankle injury earlier this year, uh, last year as well. So it's quite possible that his college career is over. And obviously it's been a tremendous college career. Probably will not result in the Heisman this year. Uh, and with an eye toward the NFL, you hope that he is going to yeah. make a full recovery because certainly uh, his future is very bright. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the biggest hope for him is that he recovers well. He comes back. He has no problems with it. He's been brilliant in his career at Alabama and his loss now. I mean, Alabama was still very much in the playoff picture with their record and uh, playing in the SEC. But that is a huge blow for their their hopes of going forward. Jerry and Ely, the ball carrier on first down for Ole Miss, their second possession of the half. They took the opening kickoff of the half and in just two plays scored a touchdown. They're about to go over 300 yards of offense and not yet midway through the third Look quarter. Out. Here goes Plumley again. Plumley running away from the LSU defense. Another touchdown for the freshman. His third of the night. This is that same counterplay that Coach Ogeron was talking to Holly about. Got to do a better job of it. Not a good job on that time. And, and really some bad defensive back play of guys just overrunning the play and not being in position to stop that for a just a decent game the speed of Plumley again is very impressive that was a 60 yarder he had a 46 yarder on their first possession of this half they're going to go for two again make it an 11 point game where a field goal and a touchdown two point conversion could tie design run for Plumley lunging and gets there for the two well we're going to see a great replay from the progressive pylon camera on the two-point play Patrick Queen trying to keep him from getting to that corner but Plumley will have nothing of it the touchdown again it's the counter play quarterback counter you're pulling guard and tackle but watch the safety right here just be completely out of position jacoby stevens and grant delphin just get out of position take bad angles to the football and then that speed once he gets to the second level you're not going to catch him rich rodriguez loves it <laughs> calvin mcgee giving him the high five He's been with Rich Rod for nearly two decades. Several different stops coaching the tight ends here. What a player he is. John Rice Plumley wasn't even the starter. Didn't play in the first four games. And we talked to Ed Ogeron last night. He said, yeah, Ole Miss probably caught a break when the other guy got hurt. No disrespect to Matt Corral, but there has been a better offense yeah. since Plumley became the starter. And the thing about him, he's fast on film. You see it. He's faster on the field. And when you see defensive backs like LSU take bad angles and not be able to get in front of him, that's when you really realize how fast he is. And LSU is very much in a game here. Another fair catch by Torrey Carter. Here's Matt Berry. Here's a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A LSU number one leading here by 11 so far the only team in the top 10 to lose was Minnesota though Oklahoma is in big trouble at the half at Baylor and Oregon gets underway in a little over an hour in Tucson Baylor ranked 13 one of those undefeated teams maybe not getting very much respect they hold on here tonight against Oklahoma they'll be up in that conversation. LSU best in the country in the red zone. Only one time this year did they not score. 
And they're in the red zone again, comfortably so from the seven. Barreau touchdown to Justin Jefferson. They took advantage of the new man who came into the ball game for Jalen Julius. A.J. Finley, the true freshman, came in, and they went right after him. So both Jefferson and Chase now with two touchdown catches, and they're each over 100 yards receiving for the game. Now it's just a little stick move to the outside. That throws Finley and Jefferson. An easy throw for Joe Burrow. So back and forth they go here in the third quarter. Matching scores. Cade York the extra point with 6.50 to go in the third quarter. LSU with 41 on the board. Leading 41-23. Fourth touchdown pass of the night for Joe Burrow. He's thrown for 390. Making a strong move to try to get in that top four in the college football playoff rankings. Utah and Oregon each still with one loss. Avery Atkins, a touchback. John Rice Plumley, here's the effect he has in this run game. This time on the keeper, and then watch the, the counter. Again, good read. Once he gets those shoulders north and south, I mean, you're just not going to catch him. He just has that type of breakaway speed, but he also opens up things for other things for other players. Ely gets a nice run because there's so much attention inside on the potential of Plumley running. For 150 yards now for John Rice Plumley. Gives it off that time. Jerry and Ely, they are gashing the LSU defense on the ground. That is 23 more and another Ole Miss first down. Well, that's the play we just showed you with, that was drawn up. I mean, you've got Plumley running inside, and you've got Ely on the perimeter. And, and if whatever the decision is by the defense, it's wrong. Well, the previous two possessions were two plays and a touchdown. Can Plumley do it for the third time? No, they're ready for him after a one-yard gain. That was his third carry of the half. The first two were 46 yards for a touchdown and 60 yards for a touchdown. They're up to 266 on the ground. They're the leading rushing team in the SEC, averaging 247 per game. Got to find a way to get Elijah Moore back in the ball game, also as a receiver. Ely to midfield. That'll bring up third down and seven for the Rebels. Neil Farrell made the tackle. Ely, a terrific football player, but he says, I have no interest in a future in football. I am first and foremost a baseball player. Well, we are told he might have been a very high draft pick in the Major League Baseball draft, but he made it clear he was intending to go to college. It'll be an outfielder and Mike Bianco's baseball team. Lumley throws an interception. Picked off by Kerry Vincent. Who looks plenty healthy on this return. And he's chopped down inside the 30-yard line. Well, remember, Kerry Vincent didn't start the game. They weren't sure if he was going to be able to play. He's matched up on Elijah Moore in single coverage. And makes a great play on the ball. He's the nickel. He plays a lot of man-to-man. -man. That's their number one receiver, Elijah Moore. And he just undercut the route and made a play on the football. A bad decision by Plumley, certainly. Just his ninth pass attempt of the night. And his first interception. For Terry Vincent, the junior from Houston, his second interception of the season. You just kind of know. Possession, unsportsmanlike conduct of the intercepting team from a 51. 15 yards from the run, automatic first down. Correction, the player was number five. 
It was Vincent who made the interception. He limped off a couple of times last week at Alabama, and then he didn't practice this week until Wednesday. Was a question mark. He's a speedster. He's been on their track team, was part of their 4x100 meter relay championship team back in 2018. The SEC. Ripped his helmet off at the end of the plate. Burrow did well to hang on to the ball. It was Keydron Smith, the cornerback, there to drop Burrow for a sack. Great job by Keydron Smith, not giving up on the play. He was initially picked up by Clyde Edwards Elaire, but he kept fighting. That was a three man route. They had max protection trying to get a big play down the field, and the corner blitz got to Joe Burrow. We're backing up the penalty, and now the sack. Third time Burrow's been sacked tonight. Jalen Julius, who left earlier in this quarter, went in the medical tent, is back in at safety for Ole Miss. Burrow on target to Thaddeus Moss. His fourth catch of the game. DeAndre Prince, the true freshman defensive back out of Charleston, Mississippi, made the tackle. LSU's tight end last year, Foster Moreau, had 22 catches on the season. He was a fourth round draft pick of the, the Raiders. And, uh, Moss's numbers are clearly surpassing him this year with a couple games left. Changed the offense. Went out at the end of last season. Ed Ogeron told the offensive coordinator, Steve Ensminger, we need to find somebody who can teach us the spread. They went and got Joe Brady from the New Orleans Saints. That one was almost picked off through the hands of Luke Knox, redshirt freshman linebacker, the brother of Dawson Knox, who was a terrific tight end here at Ole Miss and is now with the Buffalo Bills. Well, that was one of the defenses that Mike McIntyre told us about. It's called the Creeper. He's a defensive end. He's outside, but he drops into that slant area. They rushed the opposite side and dropped him into that slant area, and he almost came up with the interception. Well, here's Cade York for a 52-yarder. would be the longest of his freshman season. Plenty of leg. Wow. Boy, did he boom that one with room to spare from 52. He only tried one of 50 plus prior to tonight. He missed a 53 yarder against Utah State. But he bombed that one through. Good snap and hold. Blake Ferguson and Zach von Rosenberg involved in those parts of the operation. And it's 44 to 23 in favor of LSU. Holly? You guys, a big play for LSU's defense there with Kerry Vincent Jr. getting that interception. He did not play, I don't think, at all in that first half. He's been over here on the bike. He has a contusion on the back of his hamstring that had been giving him trouble. But it seemed like the last two possessions he was in there for that defense. He made a quick adjustment, came in in the ball. The defensive coordinator and some of the coaches over here came over and said to him, nice play, that's smart. They need him on the field right now because they were getting gashed, and he's made a difference for their defense since he's entered the game. He sure made a great play there in single coverage and didn't show any effects of a leg injury. He was in perfect position to make a big turnaround play in the ballgame. Avery Atkins, another strong kick. Tyler Knight will take a knee. Well, tune in Tuesday at 8 p.m. on ESPN for the next installment of College Football 150, the American Games to celebrate 150 years of college football. This episode will explain how college and pro football are closely connected, but how the college game was forever changed as football became professionalized. And on Thursday, it's College Football 150, the greatest college to pro coaches. It's not every great college coach can also succeed in the pros the panel debates the top 11 coaches of all time who have succeeded in both the college and pro ranks saw Archie Manning here tonight Ole Miss royalty John Rice Plumley. I think he's Southern football royalty. Not he's just, just royalty. He, he is. He's, Wherever he goes. He and Olivia are two of the finest people that I have ever met. Never known. We're told Eli Manning was going to be here tonight. Eli and Cooper and their families, I think, were both here.
You might be able to be as nice a guy as Archie Manning, but you can't be nice enough. That is not humanly possible. Snoop Connor wrestled down by Jacob Phillips. We're under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Of course, the Manning's from New Orleans. I'm sure, with lots of interest in this LSU team as well. Snoop Connor. Well, what do you think about this defense, Todd? I mean, when they get in the college football playoff, and I think yeah. they are uh, very likely to do that, uh, they're going to face a team like Ohio State or Clemson. You know, some offenses, no offense to Ole Miss, they're a lot right. better than Ole Miss. Balance. They're going to be mm -hmm. more balanced. And, and that's, you know, they, they've got work to do. This, they are a work in progress defensively. And I know we're, you know, we're already towards the end of the season. But they, uh, with an eye towards the playoff, they have a lot of work to do. Glenn Logan starting defensive end limps off. Now this Ole Miss run game, I mean, it, it's it's for real. I mean, with John Rice Plumley and the speed they have, they ran for almost 300 against Alabama. I mean, they're nearing 300 here at 290 right now against LSU. I mean, it's it's a legit run game, but if you're a national championship caliber team. You got to be a little bit better defensively than this. They've averaged about 277 on the ground in conference play since Plumley became the quarterback. Connor, another big gainer against this LSU defense to the 41 yard line. And that gets them over 300 yards, rushing as a team, 302. They're really putting this LSU defense, some of the certain players, in conflict by not trying to run inside now. That they're running the quarterback and they're running a little bit of the stretch play. And he's reading that and, and allowing the defense to make a decision and then going off of it. Snoop Connor, the ball carrier. LSU started the night giving up just 101 yards per game rushing. That was second best in the SEC behind only Georgia and 13th best run defense in the country. But to me, some of those numbers you have to weigh against, well, they're ahead right. all the time. So a lot of times their opponents stop trying to run the ball. They have to throw because they're so far behind. Doesn't matter if Ole Miss is behind. They're going to continue to run the ball. They are a big play running offense, as we've seen tonight. Elijah Moore banged around, but he held on and got the first down to the Tiger 27. You just wonder also if Jonathan Mingo can make a play. I mean, they're always looking for Elijah Moore, who's in the slot. Here's Mingo one on one with Stingley down here, and they're just kind of letting him go and let Stingley take care of him. They know where Moore is and where the ball tries to go in the pass game. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Plumley stacked up. Caleb on chase on leading the way for LSU. This will be the last road game of the regular season for the Tigers. They'll finish with home games against Arkansas and Texas A&M. They'll yeah. be big favorites in both of those. Looking to go to the conference title game against Georgia undefeated. Georgia the best defense in this conference. That'll be a real challenge for him. Plumley drop. Patrick Queen got through the offensive line to drop That's that play for a loss. End of the third quarter. You're watching College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi, number one LSU leading the Ole Miss Rebels 44-23. You can check out our alternate angle Xfinity Skycam coverage of tonight's game, streaming live on the ESPN app. For those people who love Skycam, there are a lot of them. We probably should have told them that earlier. Wait a minute, I could have been watching Skycam all night? Here's Plumley on the run, gets it off just before he crossed the line to Elijah Moore. He gets some help from Plumley yeah. to get down near the 20-yard line. Uh, this is this is like a Brett Favre type play. 
He steps up in the pocket. At first, it looks like he's going to run. Then he flips it to the back, and then he says, I'm going to go ahead and help you try to get a little bit closer to that marker so we can go for it on fourth down. And they will on fourth down and five. Second charge time out of the half. LSU. 30 seconds. Well, Plumley has rushed for 164 against the number one team in the country last week against obviously different competition New Mexico State he rushed for 177 right I mean in the Southeastern Conference he's become the most prolific running threat he's going to be leading the conference in yards per game rushing yeah. after tonight and he's not a real big guy he's very fast he's not very big but the advantage when you run the quarterback you gain an extra blocker and, and you know defenses have to account for that and uh, they do a good job of exposing you defensively because of that. Holly? Well, guys, he seems too good to be true. John Rice Plumley is a 4.0 student, plays the classical piano, running the ball like this. We asked him if he is indeed perfect, and he said no. There was a nine-week stretch when he was in high school, taking three college courses where he did get an 89 on a test only for nine weeks, though, and he did eventually get an A in that class. So, yes, indeed, he, he may be perfect. <laughs> One slight blemish. They designed a run for him, and the Tigers were ready for it. Stop him with a couple of yards to spare. And the Tigers will take over on downs at their own 20-yard line. It wasn't the counter. They did pull Ben Brown, the right guard, try to get him in there, but that was good solid defense at the point of attack by LSU and uh, able to stop Plumlee. Plumley 166 yards rushing tonight. Now the uh, Ole Miss record for rushing yards in a game by a quarterback is 178 by Norris Weiss against Mississippi State back in 1972. He did that on 19 carries. Plumley 16 carries for 166 and three touchdowns tonight. Meanwhile, Clyde Edwards Elair ahead for about three. And meanwhile, he's over 100 as well. Clyde Edwards Elair continues to play extremely well down the stretch and in the biggest games, in the SEC games, the game against Texas, the big games for this LSU football team. He has played big. He and Joe Burrow have kind of led the way offensively. 117 yards rushing. Seventh career 100 yard game. They are 6 0 in the previous six. 4 0 this season, including last week at Alabama. Burrow running out of field. Is that an interception? Is he I in think bounds? So. I think he was. Yes, he was. Kedron Smith with the pick. There is a flag down. Just don't see Joe Burrow do this very often. Offense, number 74. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is an interception. First down, Ole Miss. The dark tray or for the hole that'll be turned down. There's the hold right there, the second one on Trey or, and that's just a play where Joe Burrow was a little hesitant whether to throw this away, step out of bounds, or take a shot for Jamar Chase. And it was not a confident throw that he made there, and it was picked off. I just think he kind of hesitated on whether to throw that or not. The old phrase of he who hesitates is lost. That happened to Joe Burrow on that one. Fifth interception of the year. First, as you saw in the graphic in the fourth quarter, they fake the reverse. Plumley keeps it. Here he goes again. Touchdown, John Rice Plumley. His fourth of the night. He's rushed for an Ole Miss quarterback record 201 yards. The safeties for LSU are struggling against the quarterback. I mean, here's Grant Delpit, one of the best players in the league, number seven. Watch him go with the reverse and not see the quarterback until it's too late. And again, once he gets in an alley with his shoulders going north and south, it's over. Extra point, good. Off the foot of Luke Logan. 
rare bad decision by Joe Burrow throwing this ball late and a little hesitant. The interception and one play later, it's John Rice fumbling, much to the delight of his offensive coordinator, Rich Rodriguez. Tuesday at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. The exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings. Be the third of this season. Recently, the guys will break them down from top to bottom, have coaches' reactions, and a live interview with the committee chairman, Rob Mullins. Luke Logan bounces one down the field, free ball, and the Tigers smother it near the 30 yard line. John Rice Plumley has been unbelievable, particularly in the second half. Four touchdown runs. He's run for 201 yards on only 17 carries, averaging over 11 yards per carry. And it's just some of it's poor defense, some of it's being out of position, and a lot of it is just flat out speed by John Rice Plumley. He has been one big play after another here in the second half, Sean. In this half, touchdown runs of 46, 60, and 35. Since halftime, he's carried eight times for 155 yards and three touchdowns. He's keeping Ole Miss within striking distance. Two touchdown game. Burrow, it's his turn. Thaddeus Moss across the 45 for a first down. We were just saying during the break, two completely different quarterbacks in the ball game. Both really fun to watch. I mean, John Rice Plumley as a runner and Joe Burrow as a passer, both having outstanding nights. Both making history here tonight. Burrow off the play fake on target again. Jamar Chase spun down at the 39 yard line of Ole Miss with another first down on a 15 yard pickup. Four twenty-eight now for Joe Burrow. Second four hundred yard game of the season. For four seventy-one. Give us an indication of the kind of season he's going to have in their win at Texas. Right. And all three of these receivers had over a hundred yards worth of catches in that game as well. Looks in the run again with Clyde Edwards Hilaire, just about a two yard gain. And we'll go under 12 minutes to go. Well, Tommy just mentioned the next reveal Tuesday night of the ranking. LSU clear cut number one this week for the first time in the college football playoff rankings, but also number one in the AP poll. And the coaches poll. Timeout for an injured player. And deservingly so, four wins this year against teams ranked in the top right. ten at the time of the meeting, including that game against Texas. That's more than any other team in the country. Damian Lewis, the guard, is the injured player. But now watching this, 30 points given up tonight. 41 last week against Alabama. If you're the committee, do you start to say, well, wait a minute, maybe uh, the defense yeah. isn't good enough to be worthy of one, number one. Maybe we need to reconsider Ohio State. I don't know that there'll be a swap. You know, Ohio State played Rutgers today, so that it wasn't like they had to really extend themselves. However, I do think the gap will be closer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, assuming LSU is able to to hold on and win this, whatever the final score ends up, they've already shown that they've struggled defensively in this ball game against the running game of Ole Miss. So I do think that gap will shrink uh, between Ohio State and LSU and even Clemson potentially. Lewis walks off. Holly has mentioned a few times the depletions, to the offensive line. Austin Deculus, ordinarily their right tackle, had started 20 straight games, didn't go tonight with an ankle injury. Sadiq Charles, the left tackle, out. Coach's decision, disciplinary matter there. And now Damian Lewis, the starting right guard, goes out. Chasen Hines has come in for him. Sophomore wearing number 57. You'd have to think that is not a coincidence, right? Hines, 57. <laughs> Spelled differently, but yeah, I think it probably fits. 
like to take credit for that, but it was Ben Ward in the truck who whispered that in my ear. Long throw up for grabs and intercepted by DeAndre Prince, the freshman, his second interception of his career. And what is going on with Joe Burrow all of a sudden? DeAndre Prince is just going to read the quarterback's eyes. Watch number 24. It looks like man. Then he flips to see the quarterback and drops underneath the throw to Jefferson. He showed man. He dropped into zone. And he fooled Joe Burrow. The true freshman, DeAndre Prince, fooled the veteran Joe Burrow on that one and came away with the interception. Well, he's thrown two interceptions now in the last four passes. Prior to that, he had thrown four interceptions all season. You can tell he's a little annoyed with himself. Now can they go back to the quick strike rushing attack? Yes, they can. Jerry and Ely powers ahead. Out to the 33-yard line and a first down. 17 more for Matt Luke's rushing offense and 356 for the game. Excellent block by Octavius Cooley, the tight end, just kept blocking downfield, and that enabled Ely to turn that into a big game. Plumley elected to keep it, and he got smothered by Neil Farrell. And Neil Farrell did a nice play, a little inside move, beat the right tackle, Alex Givens, the most veteran offensive lineman up there for Ole Miss, but he was beaten on that play. Line up in the pistol now with Ely behind his fellow true freshman John Rice Plumley. Plumley able to turn the corner again. That'll get him back over 200 yards rushing for the game. But short of the first down, and here comes a huge third down for Ole Miss. They need the 43, so it's third down and seven. To probably get this one by throwing it though. By the way, the rest of the team's not doing all that right, for the either. Right. With 155 yards rushing, 133 of those for Ely on just 11 carries. And Plumley can throw it too. They say he's an improving passer. And that one looked good to Elijah Moore with just enough for the first down to the 44. Really nice job by Elijah Moore knowing what was needed for the first down, getting past the sticks and then showing his numbers to the quarterback for the catch, his sixth catch of the ball game. First third down conversion of the night for the Rebels. They're one for seven. Plumley carries again. You know, we asked the coaches, Rich Rodriguez, Matt Luke, you know, they had Plumley in the end of the game two weeks ago, the game we did against Auburn, even though they were down in the final minute or yeah. two. And usually you'd say, put the passing quarterback, Corral, and they said, well, <laughs> we think we can move yeah. down the field very quickly with this guy running the ball. And they have demonstrated that regularly. Pitches it out to Ely. Ooh. The first man missed and then got stood up by Jacob Phillips. They'll give him the 48-yard line. It's a really odd play. That's the second or third time they've run it. It's a, it's a toss, but it's a long distance to toss that football. I mean, <laughs> That's a dangerous play because you're throwing it behind the line of scrimmage. If it's not handled clean, it's a fumble. Third and six, you'd have to think four down territory yes. with under eight and a half to go in a 14 point game. Snoop Connor, the running back. Elijah Moore, the go to guy right here in the slot again. Or perhaps a Plumley run. They're offside. Plumley throws it to Elijah Moore. They blew the play dead. Crowd doesn't like it. The chase on was so far offside. He had a direct path to the quarterback. Back to the snap. Offside. Defense number 18. Unabated to the quarterback. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Well, they, they don't get the yardage for the first down. There's Chase on clearly across the line. That's why they blew the play dead. But now they're third and very short, which and two down territory, you got to figure they got a good chance of making this. And now a timeout called by LSU. Last one.
ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. College football stays here. Book now at Hampton.com. And in part by Burger King. Try the all-new Impossible Whopper, made from plants and now available nationwide. Each team over 500 yards of offense. LSU 581. Ole Miss 506. A look from the progressive pylon camp. Night of history for Joe Burrow. Single season passing yardage mark set at LSU by him tonight. 17 straight completions, also an Ole Miss record. And John Rice Plumley, an Ole Miss record, single game rushing by a quarterback, 207 on 20 carries. Here's third down and one. They're down by 14. Snoop Connor didn't take the handoff. It's Plumley around the corner. First down and out of bounds at the 42. Yeah, it was a good long fake. And Jacob Phillips was right there to hit Snoop Connor in the backfield. Plumley kept it, got the first down, and a new set of downs here in LSU territory. Connor ahead for a couple just inside the 40 yard line. Rashad Lawrence on the stop for LSU. You know, when you're not a hurry up pass offense like Ole Miss, you got to think now we have to play with a little more urgency here. We have to score twice, and we're a running football team. We can't take too much time trying to get this first score. We've got to move with a little more urgency. Connor broke away from Lawrence, bounces outside as a first down, and runs out of bounds. Just shy of the 25 yard line. They're coming up on 400 yards rushing against the number one team in the country. See, watch Richard Lawrence just kind of be, he can't be right. Do I take the quarterback? Do I take the back? He hesitates. Snoop Connor runs out of an ankle tackle. And that's the kind of conflict they're putting some of these defensive linemen in with that quarterback option of the run. And Plumley's pass batted down by Jacoby Stevens. Trying to get the ball to the tight end, Octavius Cooley has not caught the football tonight. He's a big target, very, very effective in the run game, though, as a blocker. They split him out as part of a three-receiver bunch, and blasted was more by Kerry Vincent. He didn't want to watch his mates continue to get gashed by this Ole Miss offense. He's made some big plays here in the second half. Yeah, they tried to fool the LSU defense with that formation with three receivers to the opposite side. But when the guy you always throw to is to the other side, he's going to attract attention. And Kerry Vincent was there for him on that play. Third down and seven. Four down territory for sure. Well, we had a guy. Plumley pulls it down. There's a flag now, perhaps for a hold. Shard Lawrence made the tackle. Six minutes to go. It is a holding call against Ole Miss. Jimmy Carter, James Carter. I think Nick Broker's the, the guy that's going to get it to left tackle. He had Ely, holding though, for a touchdown. Offense number 64, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains third down. Watch Ely. He's going to slip right in here. And as John Rice Plumley starts to move, if he throws the ball right now, he's got a touchdown to Ely. He didn't see him in time, and then there was the penalty on Broker, and that backs him up even more. It's interesting. Would have been fourth down. I guess they figure against this running team, they'll take their chances that they can't pick up 17 on two plays. So they throw it deep and up for grabs. Some hand fighting, Elijah Moore and Cordell Flock, and no flag. And it'll come down to a fourth down and 17 now. Not a very high percentage play here <laughs> on third and long. Single coverage. Both guys pushing. Yeah, if anything, Moore pushed yeah. him away the most at the end. Interesting there, Todd. Flott covering the best receiver yeah. from Mississippi. Roll miss. The true freshman, Dave Aranda, said in recent weeks he's been their best coverage guy in the practices. They matched him up there in a key spot. He made the play. 
He's been in for Kerry Vincent when he's not been on the field. Play of the game so far. Plumley too high. Over the head of Elijah Moore. And LSU holds and will take over on downs with 5.35 to go. And the top ranked Tigers leading Ole Miss 44 to 30. Saw Minnesota when they finally got a signature win last week, make a big jump in the college football yeah. playoff rankings. 17-8. Of course, they lost today. It'll be interesting to see if Baylor wins that one. How much they move up from number 13. I think they'll be in the top 10, inside the top 10 for sure if they win. Edwards E layer, the ball carrier. Now LSU just like to kill the clock if they can with a 14-point lead. 5.34 to go. 21 carries, 125 yards now for Edward Delair. Yes, this is college football today, isn't it? Prolific offense on both sides. Edwards Elair dropped by Kadir Shepard. Here's tonight's PlayStation Player Impact ranking. Edward Elair has a rating of 95. That is third best among all running backs. In the country, Najee Harris of Alabama, Zach Moss of Utah, ahead of him. He started the season, did Edward Zeller as the 21st ranked running back. Timeout. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. From Oxford, Mississippi, 53,797. The attendance tonight, that's the largest home crowd of the year for Ole Miss. Joe Burrow, after a near-perfect first half that included 17 straight completions, through two interceptions in a span of four passes, through three straight incompletions for just the second time all year. And now here's third down and six. Ole Miss just used its first time out, down by 14 with 5.23 to go. They bring pressure right in his face. He got it off. Jamar Chase breaks free. They have angles on him. He made a great cut to the outside and scored. Another huge play, 61 yards. Everywhere you look, these players on offense piling up huge stats. That's three touchdowns tonight on eight catches and 227 yards for Chase. Well, first of all, you're going to see Lakia Henry come on the blitz. He's unblocked. Burrow's courageous, stays in there, and hits the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Kedron Smith beaten on the play, can't make the tackle. And Jamar Chase does what he does really well, find the end zone after a catch. Eight for 227 and three touchdowns. And that's not his best game of the season. An extra point good by Cade York. He had 10 for 229 and four touchdowns at Vanderbilt <laughs> in game four of the season. And that's the fifth touchdown pass of the night for Joe Burrow. Well, the thing that Joe Burrow does is he throws to every part of the field. He spreads you out. Now, that ball is in between the hash and the numbers. He loves to throw the slants. He loves to throw the over routes. He'll also throw outside the numbers on the fade routes over the outside shoulder. This last one back into the middle of the field in between the hashes. One on one coverage. Jamar Chase shows his strength after the catch and then his maneuverability. Again, Joe Burrow, he has the interceptions, but he's still 32 of 42, nearing 500 yards, five touchdowns and distributes that ball everywhere except deep down the middle in the ball game tonight. So 489, a career high for Burrow. Five touchdown passes, one shy of the school record that he set in that win at Vanderbilt. And now Chase, the record holder all by himself and touchdowns receiving in a season for LSU with 13, one more than Dwayne Bow. Avery Atkins, the kickoff, 
And a fair catch made by Devon Peniman. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Joe Burrow was able to collect himself quickly after that last interception. He came over the sideline, and coaches told us all year long that he doesn't get too high and he doesn't get too low. His expression never changed. He sat with the headsets on, silent, staring straight ahead, trying to get his focus back in this game, and he did on that last play. After the touchdown drive, he just came over, and he has literally now shaken every single player on this bench. His expression still never changing, still the calm, collected Joe Burrow, even after those mistakes. Such a great leader. I mean, you can just see how his team relates to him. They love having him as their guy. And uh, <laughs> they put him on their shoulders last week at Alabama, but he's put that team on his shoulders all season. Matt Corral back in at quarterback. There is a flag down. A lot of movement with no False snap. Start. Offense, number 13, five-yard penalty. First down. Well, Joe Burrow, we mentioned not only is that a career high with 489 tonight, that is the second highest single game total in LSU history. That one up for grabs a bit, caught by Tyler Knight. Rohan Davey threw for 528 at Alabama in 2001. There have only been four games in LSU history of 400 yards passing or more, and Joe Burrow has two of them. Both this season. So obviously, Rohan Davey, the record, is one of them. And Tommy Hodson threw for 438 against Tennessee in 1989. And that's it for 400 yard passing games for LSU. Corral showing he can run. He ducks down to avoid the hit. Just shy of the 30 yard line with Patrick Queen coming in quickly. Have you just tried to start right now? Recapping all the records that have been set here tonight. You couldn't get to the ball by the end of this game with four and a half minutes to go. Tylen Knight chopped down. Nice play in the open field by Cordell Flott. Now they really like Cordell Flott. As you mentioned, he's really been impressive in practice. They're really high on him. They feel like he can play corner or nickel. And with Kerry Vincent not being 100% tonight, they've had to count on him quite a bit. Dave Aranda's quote to us last night, there's Corral on target for a first down to Elijah Moore, was that Flott might be our best performing defensive back right now. He had a great week of practice. Apparently he got dinged up a bit. He's coming out. Kerry Vincent comes back in. I think the thing that, as I've watched the defense tonight, one of the things that's been a little bit disappointing to me is the the tackling and the angles taken by the safeties and Grant Delpit is a great player particularly in pass defense but against this running game he's taken some bad angles missed some tackles and uh, has been a responsible for some big plays Corral on target Elijah Moore weaves through that defense and a touchdown and you talked about Delpit we mentioned earlier Todd a sprained ankle earlier in the year a thigh issue last week and he just doesn't seem doesn't to be look running right. anywhere near yeah. 100%. No, he doesn't look like he's accustomed to looking. And again, it's plays out in space. And in today's college football, you have to be able to make plays in space. There's Delpit right there, number seven. He's going to just kind of get exposed at the back of this catch. He breaks down then loses his footing, and Elijah Moore takes it to the house. But you're right, he just doesn't look the same. Luke Logan kicks the extra point. 51 37. Elijah Moore, sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, with the touchdown. His first of the night. He has nine catches for 144. So a rough night for the defense yeah. as Ole Miss is now up to 609 yards of total offense on 9.1 yards. Per play, LSU has 646 on offense. Unbelievable. You, know, you you asked about the college football playoff ranking in Ohio State and LSU, and I, I don't know that Ohio State would pass them this week. But if Ohio State beats Penn State next week in Columbus, a good football team, a good resume team, uh, I might you might see it then. Mm -hmm. You know, you may not see it this week, but you might see it in two weeks. LSU plays at home against Arkansas next week. And Ohio I think State it's going to be very close. Against, I think I mean, it is, the it is starting this. to shrink for sure. 
I mean the offense obviously is prolific but so has Ohio State's been again against lesser competition right. Ole Miss excuse me LSU has scored at least 42 points in every game except their 23 20 win at home against Auburn on October 26th of course Auburn's one of the best defensive right. teams in the country and at four wins against teams that were ranked in the top 10 at the time that they played I mean, Ohio well, State four were in the top that. 25 still yes. entering today onside kick by Logan recovered by Justin Jefferson and here's Matt Berry Utah's going to do its part. A lot of people are looking toward the Pac-12 championship game. Maybe two one-loss yes. teams, one-loss Utah, one-loss Oregon. They're both expected to be prohibitive favorites in each of their remaining games. Edwards Elair off to the races. Touchdown LSU, 49 yards. Just inside zone, just basic run play inside. And a play where that big physical offensive line just kind of imposed their will on this play. Got movement at the line of scrimmage. Good block by Chase on the second level. The wide receiver. And maybe a little fatigue on that old Miss defense mm -hmm. showing on that play. Not far from the home of uh, Elvis in Tupelo, Mississippi. The defense has left the building. <laughs> I'm not sure it was here for very long tonight. The extra point is good. 58-37. And let's uh, tip our cap to Ole Miss. You know, we yeah, talked about fight. where their program was. You know, it wasn't all that long ago. As a matter of fact, last home game tonight for the seniors. And Matt Luke made the point to us yesterday, the 50-year seniors, those players were red shirts right. during the Sugar Bowl season in 2015. And then the NCAA mess came. A lot of those guys could have left. Most of them stuck it out, and uh, they haven't won much since then. This will be back-to-back -back losing seasons now uh, for them. But uh, you can see that the future is bright with a talented nucleus. They, they've got a lot of young freshman players that are dynamic, and they've continued to recruit well. And uh, I, I believe, and I think you and I both believe, that, that they do have a bright future, that they can turn the corner. They've been through some very difficult times, but uh, what they've shown so far tonight with these young players Pretty impressive. And only Clemson has played more total freshman red shirts or true freshmen than Ole Miss. They have more yardage from any team in the country from freshmen, largely thanks to yeah. that man, John Rice Plumley. Excellent coaching staff. No question yeah. that Rich Rodriguez and Mike McIntyre have been difference makers. What a job Rodriguez has done tailoring this offense to the yeah. strengths of Plumley. Another Touchback off the foot of Avery Atkins. Sports Center from Los Angeles tonight. Right after the big game coming up, Arizona and number six, Oregon. Lyndon Stan will tell you which one lost team has the best chance of making the playoffs. Reactions to Colin Kaepernick's workout. Is there a team that just might sign him? How did Kawhi and Paul George do in their first game together for the Clippers? Sports Center from Los Angeles after college football and ESPN and the ESPN app. So Edwards Elair with that long touchdown run now has his career high for rushing yards in a game with 172 on 23 carries. A delay. Matt Corral gave it off to Snoop Connor. And he's across the 30, tackled by Ray Thornton. I just, I, I still just shake my head. I, I, I've done so many LSU games in the past and to see them scoring 58 points in a game and their defense giving up over 500 it's just the, the script has just been flipped so much it's unbelievable well the impact that one coach can make you know Ed Ogeron and offense coordinator Steve Ensminger were quick to give Joe Brady his just yeah. due that we decided we needed to upgrade the passing attack and it's impressive how well Ensminger and Brady have worked together yes. I think it says a lot about Steve Ensminger. Did you bring in a guy? Uh, Steve still calls the majority of the plays, but you can see they sit right there together. That's Steve on the right. 
Yep. They talk throughout the game. And Steve told us Joe handles a lot of third down calls, red zone calls. And Steve takes care of first and second down. It's working. Well, and I think it's working because of Steve Ensminger, as you said. I don't know that it would work in a lot of places, but he's a humble guy. He's an LSU guy. He wants what's best for this team, for the staff. And, and because of his willingness to embrace Joe Brady and what Joe Brady brings, that's why it works. And uh, it's fun to watch. And we asked Ed Ogeron, how'd you find Brady? Of course, he was with the Saints the last couple of years. So we've been aware of him for a while. He played at the College of William & Mary. You can see how young he is. He finished playing in 2012. He's 30 years old at Penn State. Of course, they had a terrific offense there with Joe Moorhead, yep. the coordinator, one of the best in the country. Last two years with another bright offensive line, Sean Payton, Pete Carmichael, and that staff. But Coach O said, we watched him do a clinic. Yeah, two Brady. years ago. Yeah. A couple of years ago, we were very impressed. So when we had the opening, I said to Steve, what about Joe Brady? Great idea, bring him in, let's talk. And I think he's going to win the Broyles Award, don't yeah, you? He as might. the top assistant yes. coach in college football this year. He made of more of a difference as an assistant coach this year than he has. Here's John Emery getting a carry. True freshman out of St. Rose, Louisiana. Numbers tell the story from 37th to 4th in scoring, 68th to 4th in total yards, 66th to 2nd in passing yards. Obviously, the offense a great fit for Joe Burrow, and Joe Burrow's personal improvement right. is a huge reason why they're a lot better. And, and again, I think his ability, because of his schedule, because he's a graduate student, his ability to, to devote so many hours to preparing for football and studying football and watching film and being a part of the game plans. He's he's approaching his last year as a college quarterback the way you do in the NFL. And, and that's why he's so well prepared and so in tune with Joe Brady and with Steve Edsminger and with this LSU offense. Emery, the ball carrier again. Well, you and I remember Holly visiting with Joe. We had their opening game last year against Miami yeah. in Arlington, Texas. He had already graduated from Ohio State. He said, what are you studying at LSU? He said, well, not much. <laughs> this is really a graduate course in football for me to prepare me for what my career is going to be, which is really what college is supposed to be. We didn't yeah. get a chance to visit with him yesterday to ask him about the academic part of it. Miles Brennan is the quarterback, talented backup for Long Beach, Mississippi. Big guy like the Burrow, 6'4, same height, 207 pounds, strong arm. And we're under a minute to go, so LSU is going to go to 10 and 0. And the 10 wins, as we said, matching the total that Ed Ogeron had in three years as the head coach here at Ole Miss. They were 10 and 25. And that seems like a lifetime ago. Now just one game left for Ole Miss, the Egg Bowl. Try to finish at five and seven. Oh, it's a win. It's 714 yards of offense for LSU. Last time they had 700 yards of offense was against Rice in 1977 when they put up 746. The offense is historic, the defense still a lingering concern. Here's Holly. Well, Coach, a unique night. Your offense continues to set records, more school records broken tonight, but how do you describe the, the trials of the defense, both good and bad tonight? You know, and we fought, we had a 21-point victory. I'm so excited, happy for our football team. Got to get better on defense. There's some things we got to get better at, but overall, great win for our team. It's hard to come back and play in a game like this. What are you proud of that your kids were able to do today? You know, I thought we started fast. I thought we came out the first half. We were fired up, ready to go. We knew they'd fight for 60 minutes. I'm glad for the win. Thank you, Coach. Go Tigers. <laughs> well, he told us he says it whenever he can. 1,328 combined yards of offense tonight. Burrow threw for 489. Edwards Elair rushed for 172. Chase and Jefferson over 100 yards received. 58-37 is the final for Holly and Todd. Sean McDonough so long from Oxford. Back we go to the studio. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the Southeastern Conference.